is up guys this is Tito back with another video on Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Cherry OS and this is the Android 13 build of course the Cherry OS version here is 4.2 official build and the build date here is 28th November 2022 this is how the home screen looks like I have added couple of widgets here and if you're noticing yes in the home screen the battery widget is working perfectly fine and on this battery widget you can see there is the phone battery settings and of course there is the Bluetooth battery settings as I have connected to this Bluetooth headset and it has been working perfectly fine and just notice animations are working great I have also added a subscriber account widget that too is working perfectly fine on that note if you haven't subscribed to the channel do subscribe guys to the left of the home screen of course we have the Google's discover page And if you swipe up, we'll get the app drawer. And if I swipe down, we will get the quick setting panel. This is how the quick setting panel looks like. I'll show you all of that. But before that, let me tell you, this is a pixel launcher. So there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen pretty much. So you will miss that if you are fond of that feature. But of course, there is the double tap to sleep on the status bar if you want to have that. Talking about the quick setting panel again, this is how it looks like. And you can edit and add multiple toggles if you want. There are plethora of options for the quick toggles. You can see all the options. I have the Wi-Fi toggle, the mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle right there. It shows the battery right there. It also shows the Bluetooth battery status on the status bar or in the quick setting panel too, it shows up and even in the status bar. And Vaulty calling and stuff should be working fine. Vaulty will appear. The logo, I mean, will appear if you are using a Vaulty SIM card. I don't have a SIM card in the device right now. And here we have the flashlight option. This is how the animation looks once you turn on a toggle. Then we have the dark theme, the auto rotate night light, always on display switching option is there on for charge and you can just turn it off. Let me show you, we have the hotspot, the screen recording option is also there. There is the device audio and microphone audio and the other features for the screen recording. We also have the battery saver, the do not disturb, the Google Home controls and the reboot toggle is also present. If you tap and hold on it, it will directly reboot to the recovery, if it says recovery of course. And heads up, you can disable from right here. And we have the data saver, the nearby share, airplane mode, the sound toggle is there as well. And now there is a Moto audio, let me actually show you, this is a Dolby kind of audio. And here if you click next. You can set par headphones profile over here like for this AirDopes 411 ANC which I'm connected to right now. You can actually change the profile to music, movie or game or custom and you can set that for a wired headset too. That should work perfectly fine. So yes, the Moto Dolby Audio is present by default here. We also get a FPS counter. There is that FPS appearing and of course the device is running at 60 FPS. In the about section, this is how it looks like. We have the about device right here and we have the Cherry's version as 4.2. It also shows the wallpaper that you are using. By the way, I have been using a Wallpi wallpaper. The device is of course Violet or Redmi Note 7 Pro and the maintainer is Kibira 5. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. And we have the Android version as Android 13. And if you make this clock to one o'clock, you will get all the Android 13 Easter eggs. They look beautiful. Now here we have the specs mentioned like the display battery and stuff. The security patch here is of November 5th, 2022, not quite December yet because this is again a November build. And we have the stock kernel as 4.14 HZ0 plus. Then we have the Islinux data showing as enforcing. In the system settings, this is how it looks like. We are getting a system updater here. For some reason, it shows there is a new update, but this is the same update which I'm on right now. As you can see, the current build date is 28th November 2022. So yeah, but it actually shows a new update for over here, but you don't need to really download it. If you want to flash this from, check out the description, you will find the flashing guides. Now in the gestures, this is how it looks. We have the quick tap action. If you turn it on, we have this take screenshot and stuff. And as you can see right now, it shows quick tap rejected as I tapped the back twice. But yeah, you can set it for multiple things like toggle flashlight and stuff. You can definitely use those. Now here we have the quickly open camera, the system navigation gestures. In the settings, we have the pill length customization and I have increased the pill length. Just notice how big this pill bar is. Looks beautiful, I would say. We have the space under the keyboard. Then we have the advanced gestures or extend swipe actions. And you can customize it between these many options for the left and right. We have the left edge, right edge customization then the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. Let me go back. We have the two button and three button navigation. You can even invert their layout, I guess. We have the press and hold power button and hold for assistant is there. The double tap action is there. This is just for enabling the ambient kind of display. The swipe direct screenshot is also working fine. If you are noticing, it should take the screenshot and it has the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens options. 
light translate feature is also there if you want to use that for some reason let's talk about the stock camera shall we this is the stock camera that you are getting we have a google camera go edition and you can actually enable the face retouching the photo aspect ratio you can change the grid type you can enable and the save location options are there even the night mode the hdr options are there timer flashlight is basic things but yeah you can definitely use this one if you want let me actually switch to the portrait mode so I just took a quick selfie and let me actually show you. Yeah, the portrait mode works. The blur is a little too much that to my liking. But yeah, overall, it takes basic good pictures, I would say. Let me actually switch to the back camera and let's take a quick one too. So this I took in the portrait mode. The background blur is perfectly working, I would say. And if you're noticing, the details are great. So Redmi Note 7 Pro definitely has a really great camera sensor. And with that, the picture quality is amazing. And this Gcam Go is present by default and it takes really good pictures in my opinion. And we also have the video modes and stuff. If you want to shoot videos, definitely you can use it. Of course, you are not getting any kind of ANX camera, at least by default here. Safety net passes right out of the box, so you should not be worrying about the banking apps right out of the box. Also, the DRM info stays as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And with this LED RGB remote app, if I show you the IR bluster, if you're noticing that blinking light, the IR bluster is working great. Also, the Google photo shows as this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos. That simply means this ROM does have that Google photos unlimited backup. Now let me show you the customizations and in here in the cherry settings you will get all the customizations. This is how this panel looks like in the about section. You can turn to the developers from right here and we have the status bar settings on top. Here we get the status bar double tap to sleep background chip. This is the background chip. This is how it looks and definitely this ROM has amazing amount of customization. So stick to the end if you want to see all the customizations but you can skip this part if you want from the seek bar with the timestamps. Here we have the network traffic indicator and let me actually go back. We have the battery icon styles. You can have plethora of battery icon styles over here like the icon portrait, landscape right or left, then the landscape capsule, then we have the portrait iOS and MX, then other landscape are style A and like L style A, everything is there. And we are also getting the big circle, big red circle, all those things. You are not going to miss any battery icon over here. Let me go back. We have the battery percentage inside the icon or you can choose the position right or left for the next to the icon battery percentage. And you can have this follow status bar for the quick setting panel. Let me go back. We have the clock style and you can actually change the clock position and stuff and the format. In the status bar icons, we have this headset Bluetooth NFC extra icons. Of course, the Indian Redmi Note 7 Pro does not have NFC, so you shouldn't talk about it. We have the Volti icon and stuff, the VO Wi-Fi icon customization. And again, there are plethora of VO Wi-Fi or even there are plethora of Volti icons if you're noticing. Let me go back. We have the mic and camera privacy icon, the 4G indicator, roaming indicator, etc. And we have the show notification count, the colored icons, and we have the Bluetooth battery stats. The brightness control is also there. So sliding a finger on the status bar will control the brightness. In the quick settings panel, we have this transparency customization. Then we have the brightness slider on show always. Even the position, you can change it to top or bottom. Then we have the auto brightness icon, the height level, the label text, the vertical layout. And we have this data usage and stuff and we have the setting shortcut etc we have the theme section in here we have the themes layout you can go with cherry screen and the normal cherries one i have been using with the aosp one even the oxygen os options are there we have the settings base layout and stuff these kind of customization in the dark theme of course you can enable and schedule it we have the use custom theme option and i have been using it with a vivid one in the quick setting panel styles you have all these different styles if you want to use those then we have the headline body fonts and there are plethora of body fonts. Just notice how many options are there including the nothing dot headline and stuff. We have the icon packs as well. Then we have the icon shapes. These are the shapes you are getting. And we have the signal icon styles too. And again, plethora of options for the signal icons. Even the Wi-Fi icons you can customize over here. Let me go back. We have buttons in here. We have the on-screen nav bar. You can enable or disable it if you want. We have the show volume panel on the left side, the volume rocker wake and stuff. Okay, so this is where you have the invert three button navigation bar. So yes, you can definitely invert the layout if you are using navigation buttons. And here we have the animations. We have the power menu appearing animation, I guess. And we have the animation styles and stuff. By the way, this is how the power menu looks like. We do have the advanced reboot and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. And of course, in the quick setting panel, you will get the power menu right here. And if you tap on it, of course, the power menu appears. Now, let me show you. We also have the lock screen customization. We have the lock screen double tap to sleep, the long press forward and toggle torch, then the edge lighting customizations, then hide the power menu on lock screen for security. 
then we have the always on display scheduling option i don't know who would use always on display on this device but yeah the options are there we have the show charging info in lock screen option then the lock screen clock style you can change that and we have the media cover art and stuff then we have the blur amount for the media artwork in the lock screen then inside power menu we of course have the screenshot settings etc button enabling option for the power menu also the advanced reboot of course you can enable from right here and the power menu dim background and stuff you can customize from right here in the notifications we have the battery charging light this is for the notification led which is present on the bottom for the redmi note 7 pro make heads up less annoying option is there then we have the dt card and stuff then the in call vibration options two step icon and stuff is there in the misc settings we have the launch music app on headset connect ignore windows secure flags then we have the app lock and let me show you we have this protected app options we do have apps like google photos over here so you can log them if you want i'll show you the app lock and stuff later let me actually go back we have the show squiggle animation and we have this unlock higher fps in games and the unlimited google photo storage which i have already talked about that's pretty much it about the customizations yes the customizations are great over here you shouldn't worry about it in the display settings we have the brightness level customization then the extra dim in the lock screen this is how it looks we have the control from lock device this is for the google home controls and we have the always show time and info and stuff in the advanced we do have this pickup option we have the pocket detection then the dark theme and we have the display size and text you can increase the size and the font size and stuff we have the night light then the live display customization and from here you can calibrate the rgb colors and here we have the double tapped wake prevent accidental wake up and the wake up on plug we have the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from here again i have been using a wallp wallpaper over here and you can change the wallpaper colors to up to 16 colors if you're noticing and we also have the basic colors up to 16 colors then the dark theme option is there the themed icons and even the app grid we have up to 5 by 5. now one of the most important part that is the battery settings i am very impressed with this because in this battery settings we can see the design battery capacity the current battery capacity also the charging cycle shows up and it is accurate i have to say and even the battery temperature shows up this is insane in any android 13 rom i think i did not see this much for other devices but I'm just glad to see this, this battery capacity kind of things and current cycles present for the Redmi Note 7 Pro on the Cherry's OS of Android 13. By the way, I have a brand new battery over here. This is a duplicate battery, you can say. This is from a brand like AI Power, I think is the name. So with that battery, it actually shows 27 cycles. Yes, I think it is pretty accurate because I have replaced the battery a couple of months ago. And here, let me show you the battery life with this Aku battery app. I have tested it. I have got a screen on time of eight plus hours. And that's just huge for a device which is almost three and four years old, I think. And the screen off, you can actually see it's about four and a half days, you can say. So the standby time on this ROM is great. And even the combined use, you can see. So yeah, overall the battery life has been great for me and here in the battery health section, it shows that I have about 95% battery health. So overall the battery life has been amazing for me. Yes, the fast charging is working perfectly fine. I have used a 18 watt and a 33 watt fast charger. Both are working pretty much good enough, I would say. So in terms of battery, I'm very impressed with the settings and the battery life as well. In the sound and vibration, this is how it looks. We have the media call ring, etc. volume controls, normal things. And we have the live caption, then the vibration and haptics. Then if you scroll down more, we have the screenshot sound, the charging sound and vibration. Per app volume control is also there. In the Mi Sound Enhancer, we of course have this kind of presets. Also, we are getting the Dolby kind of audio, Moto Dolby audio over here. And here we get the choose preset option and the sound quality for the headphone jack, the Bluetooth headphones and even the speakers or the normal phone speaker, the earpiece, everything should be working perfectly fine here. I did not have any kind of sound problems on this ROM. We also have this show media controller on volume panel. And let me actually show you this is how the volume panel looks like. It looks definitely beautiful. You can actually increase or decrease the volume just like this. You can go and expand it just like this and you can put the phone into silent or something from here. And if you tap here, you can switch the output device just like this to this device's speakers or you can go with the Bluetooth headphones. And the animation again is working perfectly fine. And once you are playing something, it will look like this, the volume panel I mean. And here, let me actually show you, we do have this app volume right here. And you can see it shows YouTube is playing at this amount of volume. So yes, app volume control is great. In the security settings, this is how it looks. In the settings of it, we have the quick unlock if you want to enable that. Also, we have the face unlock and fingerprint right here. Let me actually set up the face unlock. I have this wire in front of my face. 
So face unlock setting up is done. We have this when swiping up on lock screen. That's great. And in the mode settings, of course, we are getting the app lock. Now let me show you the face unlock first. But yeah, double tap to wake is working fine. And swiping up, as you can see, it shows recognizing face. But it's stuck over there. No idea why. Okay, so I think I had this wire in front of my face. That's why. Let me try one more time. And yeah, the face unlock is working fine. Now for the fingerprint scanner, if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. By the way, let me actually enable the always on display so that I can show you it's actually working. It's not a gimmick. As you can see, this is how the always on display looks like on this. And the double tap to wake becomes buggy if you enable the always on display for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, right now it's working fine. Let me just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks. Let me show you just by double tapping. And here again, this is how it looks, the always on display and in the lock screen, this is how the lock screen looks. The clock font is actually staying as it is, even in the always on display. It doesn't go like thinner or thicker. Sometimes the always on display blinks for some reason. But yeah, the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine and the speed of it is great. Overall, I'm okay with the fingerprint scanner and I did not face any issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner on this ROM. And if I open a lock tap, this is how it will look and it shows touch the fingerprint scanner. And if I just do that, as you can see, it unlocks. So yeah, app lock is also working perfectly fine here. By the way, overall performance on this particular ROM has been great and switching between apps was not a problem. Let me actually show you the Twitter scrolling if you are into that. So here I'm just scrolling. Yes, there is a little bit of stutters for the first time, I guess. But once the Twitter loads, the scrolling is supposedly fine, I would say. For a budget device, it's definitely good enough. As you can see right now, the scrolling is perfectly fine. So yeah, overall the performance is good enough in my opinion. And yes, the display is running at 60 Hertz. No issues with that. The zooming, the scrolling and stuff should be working fine in websites. And here are the Antonic Gwen score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. If you are trying to get an idea about the whole performance of the UI. By the way, you can go into the split top mode and or the split screen mode, you can say, and it can switch the apps just like this, or you can scale the apps just like this. So all these features are working fine. And in the recent panel, we do have a screenshot option and a select option. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from memory. So that's been it guys about the Cherry OS based on Android 13 latest built for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and share this video with your friends if you love this ROM and give this video a thumbs up too if you did love it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Cheeto from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now. Bye.